here we are another day. I have just spent literally almost two full days working on a honeydew list. I've uh, I've also did get to pull some parts. It was a humdinger trying to pull a spring perch out of the front of a charger. But we got that done. It took me a while, but we got that done. And after that, it's been honeydew the rest of the weekend. It's a little bit late on a Sunday. I'm thinking it's like 4 or 5 o'clock-ish, you know, not dark yet. I'm going to attempt to change the transmission lines out on this Corvette. I know a lot of y'all seem to like this car, so hopefully we're going to be painting it soon. And uh, so I figured I better do something because I'm... Nobody seemed to like my whole setting up the lift video, but it's only been out a day or so. But, you know, it was a humdinger. You need to watch that video. It was, it's, it's at least entertaining, to say the least. But here we go. We're going to change the transmission lines on this vet. Somebody put them really, really close to the starter, and it vibrated on the starter. And uh, it wore a hole in it. And then another genius beforehand cut the line, put a big piece of rubber hose in there, and some funky-looking filter maybe I don't know what it is but we're getting rid of that because it leaks and it also popped off once and dumped about 42 gallons of transmission fluid on my garage floor so we're gonna get rid of that uh, at first I was just gonna go ahead and put some couplers in there and you know flares and couplers and then I realized I've got a parts car so I went out just got finished pulling the transmission lines out of the parts car very much easier without an engine in there but I think we're gonna try out the new lift today and see if we can change out these transmission lines without too much of a headache. I'm kind of tired. I'm a little irritable. Just because, you know, the honeydew list is it's just not fun. But we got her done. Mama's happy. Your mama's happy. Everybody's happy. And uh, we're going to go ahead and get started on this. And I'll kind of show you what we're up against. We'll get her get her up in the air and I'll kind of show you what, what we're dealing with. And we'll go from there. So here we go. I'm going to pop this top transmission line off before... We get too terribly involved underneath just because it's right here. And let's see if she's going to play nice or if she's going to be a humdinger. We're hoping for playing nice. Oh, she's going to play nice. Well, I'll be. We might learn to like this car, but we still got a, the lower one to do. And, uh, that one's not so easy to get to. They've got all this plastic hoopla on the car, and it's just ridiculous. If you watch the video when I pulled the, the engine out of the parts car, that white one, it was, you know, it, it was, there's parts flying everywhere trying to get that engine out of there. There's just so much crap. Ridiculous. There's probably going to be transmission fluid everywhere. It has, this lift has drip trays to keep that stuff from getting everywhere. But you can't work on it when there's a drip tray in your way. So, there we go. Oh, look at that. And, nope, not much come out. So, so far so good. And that's pretty much, well, that was, you know, really complicated. Nope, she played nice, so thank God. And uh, now we'll go ahead and put her up in the air. Here's what I'm talking about. This is the, uh, you know, engine. And there's the starter. And if you'll notice, there's a little drip right there. And what it is, is this corner of the starter had, was this part of the line was right up against it. I pulled it down since then. But if, as you can see, it's it's been leaking. So we're going to change that line. That was a good line. I could have left that one alone, but because it was leaking from there, then, you know, there's, I'm just going to have to pull her out and put in a new line. They're fairly short, so that's pretty cool. I probably shouldn't talk so loud because I'm right on the camera here. But this is this is a funky thing I was talking about right here. I don't know what kind of situation that is, but this is going to the line here. And then it goes to this thing, and then it comes back, and it hooks up with the line over here by the exhaust. Not an ideal situation. Not really sure. Maybe once I get it out of there, I'll kind of figure out what it is, but right now, like why, why? The other car, the parts car, did not have any of that. 
and this line that particular line blew off of here and filled my shop with transmission fluid and scared me to death because I thought I blew the transmission. I already sold the one of the parts car, so I was like, no! But uh, if I end up pulling this one out, she'll be getting a shift kit and some other goodies. But right now, we're just going to pull these lines out here. We'll start over here with the... Uh, hey, let there be light. We'll start over here with the transmission line, which is right there. I don't know if you can even see it in there, but there it is. There she be. So we're going to yank that out of there. won't be much to see with me working on that, I don't think. But I'll, uh, yeah, you get to watch my back of my hand or something. But it shouldn't, didn't look too hard to get at. We'll pull those out of there. Uh, and then we'll be over here and get that. There's a little bolt right here that is, was pretty easy to get to without the engine in it and the other car. But for this car, it's kind of a pain. It's going to be one of those, get my 3 8 wrench in here. And uh, I already cracked her loose. That was off camera and, you know, saved you guys from watching carnage of my hand versus steel. And if you ever look at the scars, marks, and blood on my hands, almost every video, <laughs> you'll see that usually the steel wins. But uh, anyway, we'll get this while it's going to be one of those half a turn deals till she comes out. She's got to get pretty loose though. I might be able to get her with my fingertips. I was thinking about taking it off over here but then I thought maybe I'll take it off over here then I thought maybe I'll take it off over here so I think here wins reason being because I want to be able to pull this line out fairly easy and uh, and then we'll just pull this piece out over here because probably gonna dump fluid everywhere uh, I've got a catch can oh and by the way that sharp bolt I was telling you about we didn't want to fall on the floor or behind the tires I already dropped it on the floor so what I did is this lift comes with drip pans. And so I stuck it in the drip pan. Because that hopefully will be a fairly safe place for it. Because it's in the middle. It's a little plastic pan. I'll probably lose it in there because it's dark and the pans are black. But yeah, you know. We can zip tie. Always got zip ties. Which is probably what's gonna happen anyway. We'll find out. We'll see. See just how hard it is to get that one in there. If it's not too bad, we'll we'll use it. All right, and let's, that's that one. I'm gonna go ahead and undo this one too. Whoops, I kicked the camera. It's not like kicking the bucket, it's a little bit different. But we'll go ahead and take these two off as well. And then we will, and we'll get a good shot of that, this thing, whatever it is. See if any of y'all can Maybe throw it in the comments what that is. Oh, okay, she doesn't want to. Ah, wow, steel versus flesh. Still think the steel wins. Okay, so let's get my catch can, kick in over there. So maybe we can make a little, mess, a little less of a mess. Hopefully it won't end up on the lens of the camera. I've had that happen before. This is really a mess under here. But uh, let's see if we can get this thing to come out of here. Uh, at least you got a nice grip on things. She's a coming. I'm wondering if it's not some kind of an aftermarket thing, you know? There we go. Oh, and we got zip ties. Whoa, zip ties. Somebody thinks like me. Uh, I don't know what that thing is. It's got some writing on it. So we'll, we'll figure it out. But I'm going to get something to cut those zippy ties. I don't know how exciting this is for you all, but, you know, I thought it was real exciting to, uh, there we go, to set this lift up. I was pretty excited about that. But judging by the first day of views, y'all don't agree. But that might change. 
Thanks. I don't know. I think the first few days is just my subscribers. I don't really know how that works. But I'm going to leave this, let this drip for a minute or two. Well, here it is. It says, extends the life of your automatic transmission by use of a magnet. So that's what it is. It's a big magnet, so it's supposed to help keep your transmission cleaner. But this has got to go because it it's just the cut lines are just literally cut, no flare, no nothing, and a rubber hose. I don't like it. I just don't like it. So we're going to take this thing out. And we're going to have to fix the other one just because she's got a... Now, the other one, I'd be more than happy to just put a coupler in there and make my life easy. But huh, life is never easy. So we're just going to go ahead and replace it with new lines. Well, I'm resorting to plan B. The lines going into the transmission are basically virtually impossible to get it to without dropping the exhaust and or the transmission. So I have decided that I'm not going to do that. This is the one that had the funky line on it. This is the one that's got a little notch cut in it from the starter. You can actually physically see the notch that has been cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this one right, right, well, maybe somewhere around here. And that way uh, I can snake the new line in there and put a coupling on there. So I'm going to go see if I can't find me some couplings before I get too far into it. And then this one, we're going to bend it and we may have to put a little section in there. I'm going to have to bring the lift back down, hook that line back up to the radiator up there so I know exactly where I'm going on this area. But we're going to probably cut, I was thinking about cutting it here and yeah, maybe where I'm going to cut it. We'll see. Somewhere probably in this area, wherever I can get my cutter in there the easiest. In fact, we'll go ahead and I love these little cutters. I've got a bigger one, which is actually easier to use, but this this will get in there easier. So we're just I guess we're gonna go right right here. So we just kind of spin her around, tighten her, spin her around, tighten her. Okay. You didn't get to watch that one finish, but now we're gonna pull this one out of here. Not that one, this one, if possible. Let's see if we can, just what it's gonna to take to get her out of here. Yep, gotta love working with transmission fluid. Dripping down the arm. Yeah, let's try it this way. And here's primarily the reason I decided to replace this one. It's got a hose and in a very not good spot. And look at that, it's got a little tear in it, right? Nope, that's not a tear in your mind. I forget I said that. But yeah, overall, uh, why not get rid of these hoses? So we're going to go ahead and patch these up. This is actually the one, this one over here, uh, which you can't really see. But this is the one that goes to the front that I just cut. So let's do that so we don't get too confused. See if we can't run the new line in there. And then this one, I'm going to actually go and put it back where it belongs before. See if I can bend in. Man, they don't make these to fall apart, do they? Yeah, see, I'm going to have to come up with a piece because that's got about six inches short on it. But we're just going to tuck it out of the way for now. Let's get the front one in before we start buttoning stuff up. And then uh, cut the front one to the length it needs to be. Get it buttoned up. And we're going to go ahead and make a couple of couplers because it's just not, not in the cards today, shall we say, to drop this transmission and exhaust and everything just, just to replace the lines when this will work perfectly well and be just as good. So, 
let's find a couple of couplers in the shop here and get these fixed up. I'm going to try to, maybe I should wrap the ends of that with, ah, let's say wrap the ends of that with some form of wrap to protect the threads, but Oh, we're knocking stuff off now. It's got to come over here, right about there. This is shining in my eyes. So, let's see if we can't get one. Okay. This one's not in the way much. We were there. That's pretty darn close. Shapers crow. I'll tell you what. If anything can get in your way, <laughs> it's going to get in your way. All right. Uh, I think I'm going to try to get that little bracket that we were wrestling with and put it in. Here it is. With that little bolt we were talking about because I do believe that after... I get these run, that won't be such an easy task. So, and that one, I, you know, I can actually, from here, just make it into the hole up there. I really probably just need to put it in it. But it's right there. So let's go ahead and put this bracket on here. Let's see if we can't. got that stupid bracket in why I wrestled with that bracket only you would know all right but now I'm gonna go ahead and we need to cut this 
particular line and we're going to be using this so there's a little bit of a, a gap i'm going to use these kind of fittings uh, they're not ideal there's one together uh, i wanted to use flares but this is what i had and i had to use the the one plus rule of law enforcement and law enforcement if somebody has a weapon on them there's a one plus rule meaning that if they have one weapon the chances are they'll have two weapons and so you just keep looking and then even if you find two there might be three and this is if it's going to leak you can guess it's going to leak some more and weird okay so anyway i used that rule and i found two and then i came over here and i realized ah oh, shoots i need three and so i went back not expecting to be able to find a third but by the grace of god i'm thinking it was a miracle because i didn't see this when i was in there before but there's actually a third it was a third one so i've got enough of these so i'm just what is up with that that's so weird there's nothing coming out of there but as soon as i put that fitting on it starts dripping i don't get it that's just weird but anyhow there we go so i'm gonna have to cut this one right about there so let's take this fitting off of there Put this on there and we'll cut this baby. We got a little bit of room to play with on this one because she's, you know, I don't know why I chose that tool. There's not enough room in here without creating havoc. So let's get the other one. But it was just like right in here. Normally I would fast forward this, but it's not going to take that long. So what we want to do is have as much line as possible. And we don't want to lose track of this line either because I don't know if it makes a difference at which line goes where, but I want to put it back the way I found it just to be safe. Assuming that the guy who did this original hack job did it right. Uh, This is the bottom one, I believe. Yeah, that's the top. So the bottom one is going here. Right from the bottom of the radiator. I don't think it really matters if it flows up or down inside the radiator, but yeah, we'll keep them, keep them this way anyway. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this straight piece over here, which you can't see, but it's over here. It's over there. Uh, and I'm going to use that piece to fill in this. So. Let's go ahead and finish doing this. It takes forever. Okay. And we're quickly running out of time. I have, unfortunately, have to go to a funeral. Uh, my wife's aunt passed away, unfortunately. She was a great lady. And uh, so I need to attend that. But here we go. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to go wash my mitts so that I can have a nice clean surface to work with. I don't want any grit getting in here and causing it issues. So we're going to clean these off with this nice clean rag. And then I'm going to go wash my hands. Okay. I want to keep that nice and clean. I washed my hands. It's not super, my hands are not super clean, but they're clean enough and there's no grit on them that's what I was worried about what you got to do is you got to take this collar and slide it over this and then you take this little crush nut thingy whatever they call it and slide it over that and then you do the other side same way take that and then take that slide it over there come on there we go and then we take this piece, make sure it's clean, stick it over here, on there like so, put that in, and you'll see why I wanted them kind of tight. There you go. And make sure that that's not cross-threaded.
Doesn't feel real good. Should have gone on a little easier than that. So we're going to back her off. And we're going to make sure that we have good threads here. There we go. That's better. You just tell by the way it feels. It should go on pretty easy. And uh, that wasn't, so I'm figuring it was cross-threaded. So I just bent the line a little bit more. Kind of push those two together. And get yourself a, a proper size wrench. And I promise you these crush fittings were 198.6% better idea than than uh, trying to use a well, I reckon they're going to be 14 minutes. Well, I'll be dipped in horse pucky. I don't have a 14 mil handy, so hang on, folks. I'll be right back. Okay, I'm back. This center one here is half inch, and this one is 9 sixteenths. Actually, I don't know why I said 14 mil, but it's 9 sixteenths. So we're going to snug that one up, and then we're going to snug this one up. So that they'll both kind of hang on to the line for me while I'm snugging the second one up. And then just try not to pull on the line. And just kind of, you don't want to over tighten them, but you don't want to under tighten them either. And I don't really know how to tell you to how snug to get them. You can feel it start to catch. That means she's crushing the, that little sleeve. And I'm just kind of, there we go. Just snug her just a little past over tight. Yeah, that feels pretty good right about there on that one. Yeah, you can feel it kind of stop. And I got to quit kicking this thing. Here's the piece I'm going to use. It's just about the right length, this piece here. So I'm going to take a chance and I'm going to cut it. If not, I've got other lines. And by the way, my daughter says this shirt is not cool. I disagree. What do you all think? Throw something in the comments. Tell me if you think that this shirt is okay or if it's like, yeah, don't wear that shirt. <laughs> But it's a good work shirt. It's not one I really care about if I ruin it or not. It was a freebie. Well, I gave blood that. Okay, so I paid with blood, all right? I paid with blood. But overall, you know, it was free ish. And, uh, woo, went flying. So there's that one. All right, and then we're gonna hook her up over here. And hopefully I won't have to put it in a vise. We'll be able to do it this way. Let's see if it's gonna be long enough. It's not. Yeah, it's not gonna be long enough, I don't think. So never mind. We use the other piece. I just didn't want to have to straighten it out. But you gotta do what you gotta do. Oh man, that's gonna be all it's gonna be fun. I'm gonna take and put her in a vise, I think. Okay, I straighten this piece out. And I've got my finger right on where I need it to cut. We'll get the cutter in place. Stick it up here and double check. And oh yeah, that looks just about right. Here's the problem. Now, I don't have any way to grab this thing. Here we go. So that I can spin it. There we go. I'm just going to say this 
multi-tool, Leatherman, whatever you want to call it, it's not easy on the fingers to sit here and hold it. I should have used a vice grip, but it is what it is. Ta-da! All right. The cool thing about... Oh, for crying out loud, did I go... Yeah, if you move it, we're good. Okay, so we're good. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and put this side on. If uh, in uh, first, you know. There we go. Yeah, look at this one. <laughs> you can tell that I dug it out of a can. All right. So let's get our trusty wrenches out here. I'm thinking it might be easier. Whoa! Put this in a vise to do this, but of course I'm not going to. Or maybe I am. I don't know. Let's get her snugged up. And then I'll put her in a vise and uh, tighten her up a little bit more. Yeah, that's probably the better idea. So I'm going to go stick this in a vise and turn it, and that gets this one done. And then we'll put it on the other two ends. Okay, short time later, if she's ready to go on, I'm going to go ahead and put this end on. All right. And then the other end on. The vise was definitely a good idea. Made things a lot easier. The only problem I ran into is it, it'd be a little too easy to over-tighten it because in the vise you've got so much stability. So I'm gonna, there we go. And I'm not, I think we're gonna do one, one side at a time here. I didn't like the way that felt at all. So we're gonna do one side at a time. So we're gonna have to do a little bit of finagling. And I'm gonna have to take a look at what's going on. So you don't make this line to bend real easy. So we're going to have to make this go however we want. There we go. That looks pretty good. Alrighty. Now we snug them up. Oh, that's right. We did that one already. I'm thinking backwards. There we go. She's a nice tight fit kind of press themselves together. So we'll get this snugged up on there. say the least, but when I tighten her down, she's going to keep these lines from vibrating and leaking like they were. So we've taken care of the leaky one, we've taken care of the rubber hoses, and we've got compression fittings on there, and the cool thing about them is if, they start le if they're leaking at all, you just tighten them up. If you don't have them tight enough, they will blow off. But I've got them pretty tight, if not over tight. So I'm not too worried about it. And this bracket is definitely going to keep these lines from moving around too terribly much. It keeps them real snug. There we go. And I 
think I might kind of pull these two together. There we go. I might even get a, a zippy tie. Put it right here just to keep it. I don't want to put them too close because they'll vibrate against each other. But get a zip tie and just kind of get them together like that. Maybe we'll stick that one up there a little bit. No, right there like that I think is perfect. We're going to go ahead and fire it up, see if we got any leaks. That's kind of it. Uh, they don't leak. Everything's good. I didn't get a chance to take it for a test drive because I got places to go and people to annoy. But uh, we'll take a test drive here shortly in this car. Like I said, we're going to paint it real soon. Try to get the engine in this gremlin over here. Got lots to do. This was a short, short weekend for me. Been real hectic. Uh, but we got to do a little bit today. We got this done. And uh, it's been, I've been meaning to get it done because now I can do burnouts and not worry about my transmission line popping off. So. There we go. That's putting a repairing. I guess I was going to replace them, but it turned out to be just way too much work. This works almost as good. If changing the lines was 100%, this is like 88.6. Works, right? So I'm not, you know, putting a flare would have been a little bit better. Would have put it at right about 99.5. But who's counting? This should be more than fine. Uh, it's a cheap fix, those little fittings, you know, three or four dollars a piece probably. I can't remember. I bought them like a hundred years ago. But I'm out. Officially out. I'm going to have to go pick up some more. Anyway, enough talking. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and my others, please keep watching and make sure you subscribe and tell your friends to subscribe. It helps me out. Uh, if you don't like them, as usual, just don't watch them. <laughs>